Hello everyone. Um, uh, I'm going to show you today how to install Soapbox Server 2010. It's an XMPP server that's based on the .NET framework. It's written in C-sharp actually, according to their blog, which is really cool. And it's made by uh, Coversant is the name of the company, which they're not actually very well known. So I'm actually, at the end of the demo, I will take you to their website so you can actually see what the site is. Um, and also in the YouTube description, I'll post a link up here so you can actually see what they say about this product. So I'm basically going to show you, this is the express version that we're going to be uh, configuring. It's limited to 100 users, but other than that, there's no limitations. You can still do Active Directory, LDAP. Those are all supported, which is good. So, you know, for people lo looking for that, uh, you can also do it. But also for an installation, like I'm just going to show you today because I don't actually have um, LDAP configured. Once I actually get that configured, eventually uh, I will show you. I will show you that, but uh, not not at this point. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show you that because I need to work on that a little bit myself if we want to do that. So we're on server 2008 R2. This is foundation edition. So I'm gonna bring you right to the install. Where did it go? Oh, okay. Over here. Um, where is it? Whoops, not there. Right here. So this is build 953. Oh, okay. So I have to. So we've got a license agreement. We'll click I agree. So we'll go through. Now we've got full install, but I'm actually not going to do that because I don't need. The full install does the basically it puts all the documentation in there as well, um, but since this is a server, I actually I don't need to do that. And the server that just installs the server, the manager that just installs the manager, which um, I'm probably going to do over on my Windows 7 machine over there, so that if I want to manage this thing remotely, I can. Or you can do custom, which actually allows you to configure any combination of the uh, other options over here, which uh, in some cases I would do that, but in this case I'm not actually going to do it because I only want the server. Now, before we do this though, I need to go, hold on a second, let me close that iDrive. We don't need that open at this point. So now I'm going to go to Windows Explorer and I'm going to go to my data drive now, which this is where I hold all my applications. I don't put them on the C drive because this that's not good practice on a server to install to the C drive. So I'm going to use best practices and I'm going to show it to you um, done correctly. So here is this drive. Now we're going to go to server applications, right click, click new folder, whoops, and I can't, what in the world, okay, uh, never mind, I don't care, where was I? Yeah, I do actually. Whoops, not there. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Okay, so wait. There's like so much. Okay, that's empty. Oh, what is that? 
Oh, alright. So I'm going to select all and delete that because that's actually uninstalled. That was from a previous installation that I had in here um, of this particular server that I kind of didn't need. So, okay, so I'm going to close this out. Well, first let, me, first let me back up out of there. And then, okay, whoops. All right, here we go. We're back at the setup thing. So, whoops. Oh, whoops, all right. Okay, actually, yeah, we do want the server manager in here. We don't want that, so we're gonna uncheck documentation. Uh, I don't know what this does, but I'm gonna check that. I will check those. All right, so we'll click next. Now, of course, it wants to go to the C drive, but I'm not gonna let it, so I'm gonna... So, let's go to data, server applications, Soapbox Server 2010. Okay. And then click OK. Good. Okay, now. So that's going to create that folder. Um, it created the folder automatically, which is kind of surprising because usually... Usually I have to actually um, create those folders, but apparently we don't today, which is good. Um, so, and then I'll click install. Now it's installing. And then after it gets through installing, I'm actually gonna show you how to create users um, in it and stuff like that. But we first have to like set up the database connection uh, as well, and I will show you that. Okay, now, now we have a dialog here where it's asking us about the databases, so we can either use uh, Microsoft SQL Server, uh, we can use Oracle, or um, I think, um, I'm not sure, yeah, uh, po um, PostgreSQL, I think is how you say that. I'm not really sure about that. I've never, or you can do MySQL. Um, and in our case, we're going to do, what is this? Oops. And in this case, we're going to use Microsoft SQL Server because I have the Express version 2008 R2 installed on here. So that's what we're going to use for that and then we click next and so I'm going to type in the database name here oops wait what the hold on a second uh I need to go back I like totally I can't type apparently all right, so let's go back there because I, I, I don't know. I tried to type over something. Let's try that again. Oh wow! All right, let's. No. There we go. All right, so now
All right. Um, so I think that should work. Um, actually, let's uncheck that. So we've got, let's see, let's type in the password. There we go. Okay, there's our password. So, whoops, uh-oh. Uh, Oh, all right, so we have an error here, so I'm gonna say that I do wanna run that again. So it should work with um, Windows off, and then I'll worry about the permissions later. Because the nice thing about this is actually you can um, you can go back and change it. So I'm actually quite glad that error popped up, so that way I could I could show you that. But you actually can change it, which is good. Um, so for now, we're just going to use Windows authentication, and then. Now we're not clustered, so we don't need that checked at this point. So it's not a cluster, so we can, what is this? Now, I gotta see. Oh, okay. So we didn't have an error because it allowed it through um, with the um, Windows authentication. And like I said, if I really cared about it, I could make, um, I could actually um, make a SQL Server login for that. However, I didn't bother to do that because that's not really the point of this demo. I just want people to see it. So, uh, let's see. So I'm gonna type in access cop because that's the test domain here. Dot org. Whoops. I can't type apparently. So let's try that again. Now, here we have where you can change your management how to manage users. So right now it's at database. So let's see what other options we have here. You can use Active Directory, which um, we're not set up as an Active Directory domain here, so we don't need that checked. Uh, you can use NTLM, which of course they actually <laughs> use the wording there, not the acronym. You usually see NTLM, not not uh, NT Land Manager. People don't usually say it, but whatever. The, these people are just interesting, and they decided to put that there. And you can do LDAP, so that's if you had like a custom, um, um, an Active Directory, Lightweight Directory services partition set up on here, which I don't have that set up at this point. Um, so we're just going to keep it at the Soapbox database because that's where users are going to be at this point. So, and we'll click next. Oh. 
So this is the uh, this is the admin password here. Alright, so we got a password here. So we'll confirm that and then hit finish. So we've got some This is interesting. That is very interesting. So, well. All right. Um, whoops. Well, um, that was interesting, so I'll see you for part two after I look at this log, which um, I'm sure you guys are not going to be interested in, so I will see you in the next video when I can actually get this error taken care of.